All right, I'm going to read a few poems from these two volumes. However, I'm uh, at this age, I uh, have very bad eyesight, so I'm going to read it like this. Went to an eye doctor yesterday, so unfortunately I'm not fixed yet. Uh, a few years ago, I, I played the lap dulcimer, and I had written a poem called Aeolian, which is about one of the tunings of the lap dulcimer. And then I thought that I would write poems about all of the tunings. Uh, and my partner is in music, and he was explaining the, the, the modes, which all have really cool names, so you have to write the poems just to use the names as titles. And I got to Locrian, <laughs> which I'm not reading tonight, and it said in my little book, not used in folk music. That sounded like a challenge, so I played it in Locrian, and it sounded like hell. So I wrote a poem about mountaintop removal. But this is called Phrygian. Phrygia is an area in uh, Asia Minor, they used to call it, Turkey. And it's a poem about being gay in Appalachia. Um, footnotes, since I'm a professor, right? Uh, lot, you, most of you are probably too young to remember this, but uh, years ago there was a young man at the height of the AIDS crisis who came out as gay in his hometown of Williamson, West Virginia. And he was HIV positive, and when he went to the pool, they threw him out because they were afraid they would be infected. Uh, if you've seen the movie with Colin Farrell in it called Alexander, or if you've seen Troy with Brad Pitt, you'll get some of these references. It's called Phrygian. Hurricanes remnants on the tin roof all night. Francis, my mother's middle name. Irish breakfast tea and the rain continues hard all morning, summer's last green surrounding this old house like wet malachite. I skip the gym, I strum this spruce and mahogany box on my lap, and morning moves through the blue urn of ashes on my father's mantle and my father's island where cliffs are inscalable, and on to great earth maimings and meta murders south of Charleston, West Virginia. Coal barges on the Kanawha and snow-spotted coal stealing past Hinton and car after car. This melody lives far from Phrygia, far from the long extinct tongues of Asia Minor. It winds instead through Ireland's black pudding and gooseberry jam, the scent of peat smoke, so like the armpits of a lover I had just lost, and the stone farmhouses crumbling not as fast as coal camps, but collapsing nonetheless. Finally, the forefinger slides along D minor and settles on the man I might have been, born not to liberals, free thinkers, but to others, in Ballard, Metabridge, Danese, in Kashmir, Staniford, Union. Here are the cherub met at the gay march on Washington, the one banned from Williamson's public pool when the town found out he was positive and Arthur Warren run over repeatedly near Fairmont, and Justin punched in the face in his high school's halls, forced to leave Boone County. This is in them, my lonely brothers, the small town men without men. They sleep in their secret, their useless tenderness, in the shadow of steeples in the thick country dark. They learn to cherish Greek cookbooks, Krispy Kreme, fried green tomatoes, photos of Tim McGraw taped to the refrigerator door. Rain on tin roofs, new flannel sheets, self-reliant flesh in the fist. Books and videos, Achilles and Patroclus, Sophistian and Alexander, Colin and Brad. Phrygian is this minor fact, the way a simple percentage hems us in the way a seaborne storm exhausts itself, fierce and alone. In this morning's mountains, a man mirrors what he loves. I see his black beard and beer gut, his wife beater and boots, his camo pants. He steers a four by four through the lashing rockabilly rains, heading to town to buy bourbon, sorghum, acorn squash seeds, pinto beans. One more. <clears throat> this is called Homecoming. 
It's the last poem in this book of mine. I wrote about being gay in Appalachia called Loving Mountains, Loving Men. So you get the light right. Homecoming. <clears throat> Today, mid-November, my partner, my sister, and I were carrying box after box of ball jars to the basement. Riches my father has grown and canned. Lime pickles, spaghetti sauce, green beans, tomatoes, strawberry jam. Hinton, West Virginia is much the same. That Appalachia in my teenage years so wanted to escape. There's a storefront preacher shouting about perversity, a bookish boy with a split lip. There's a gang outside a Madams Creek farmhouse shouting, come out here you queers, we'll change you. Now I know, only five hours away amidst D.C. traffic, crowded sidewalks, men are holding hands along 17th Street, buying gay novels and landerizing, sipping scotch and flirting in the leather bars. But I want to be here in West Virginia, where my ancestors worked their farms, where today we form this assembly line from kitchen to basement. John hands me a box of bread and butter pickles. I lug it, lug it down the cellar stairs. There among cobwebs, Amy's lining up the jars, greens and reds with their masking tape dates, joining other summers packed away. I want to be here where first ice collects along the creeks, where the mountain's fur turns pewter gray, and my father mulches quiescent gardens with fallen leaves. Early evenings, hard rain, hill coves filling with mist. After pinto beans, turnip greens, and cornbread, John's drowsing on the couch. I'm finger-picking a little guitar by the fire. There on the coffee table, gifts Amy's left for us. A jar of spaghetti sauce, a jar of jam. There on the mantelpiece, my mother's urn. The boy who fled Hinton 25 years ago, he's here too. The boy who dreamed of packed disco bars, summers on Fire Island, fascinating city men. The boy who did not yet know what family meant. His hair is thick and black. His beard is sparse, still dark. He shakes his head, amazed that I've come back willingly even for a weekend. An ember flares up, fingernails of freezing rain tick the windows. The boy, bemused, studies the lines on my brow, shyly strokes the silver in my beard. Thanks.